Uh, well, uh, in this part, we're going to talk about the efficiency of the market. So, so far, what we discussed is a price flooring, price uh, ceiling, and now how we can say that the market is more efficient uh, when there is no such type of restrictions like a flooring or a, a ceiling. So let's start uh, with the uh, third So uh, price uh, controls and market efficiency, part three, which uh, talk about uh, the market efficiency uh, apart from price, price ceiling and price flooring. So uh, we see uh, that uh, markets are, uh, the imposition of a control price generate benefits for some individuals and cost for others. So we saw very clearly that uh, when uh, minimum wage restriction is there. So uh, those who are already in job is going to benefit, uh, the employer is going to suffer, and as well as those who are looking for a job is going to suffer. Uh, same is the case with the rent control. So we see uh, that uh, existing uh, tenants uh, uh, are going to get a benefit. The investors or the landlord is in uh, a loss as well as, as the potential uh, uh, renter is going to be uh, in a trouble uh, to find out. Uh, uh, apartment or a house for a rent. So how we can say that uh, the market is efficient if there is no such restriction? So we can see uh, by looking at uh, this idea, we call it as a consumer uh, surplus or the benefit. So let's assume, uh, as we discussed, that uh, the demand curve is uh, reflecting the willingness of the uh, buyer uh, or we can say that uh, the buyer is uh, uh, ready to buy uh, because the buyer think that uh, the benefit he is going to get it from this product is up till this level. Uh, below that point, uh, uh, above that point, the buyer is not ready to, ready to buy. So uh, all the, uh, the demand curve, we can say as a value curve for the consumer or the buyer, or we can also say that it's a benefit uh, that the consumer is drawing uh, from that uh, product. So the whole curve is gonna reflect that uh, value that uh, in, uh, that they can, that the bo uh, buyer can uh, draw or uh, drive from the uh, product. So here, for example, here we are uh, reinterpreting the demand for pizza and this demand curve for pizza reflecting that for each pizza, the price on the demand curve shows the value consumer receives from consuming that pizza. So. At point A, uh, the <clears throat> consumer, 10, 100 consumers are, uh, are driving uh, the benefit of 20 uh, at the price of 20, uh, or the value of the pizza is equal to $20. Uh, and at the point D, uh, 400 uh, consumers are uh, placing or driving the value of $5 per pizza uh, at that point. So we see that the demand curve as a value curve as well. Uh, So on the other hand, on the other hand, uh, the supply curve is a cost curve for uh, the sellers. Uh, the market supply curve for any product shows how much a producer want to sell at each possible price. Uh, and uh, we also call it there's a minimum price at which the uh, seller is ready to sell. Uh, below this point, the seller is not ready. So the supply curve has us the lowest price that producers are willing to accept for a given unit. And for each unit of product, the price on the demand curve supply shows the lowest acceptable price for the uh, to firm for selling that unit. So lowest acceptable price. So when we combine these, uh, this is a supply curve for pizza, and we see here uh, uh, additional uh, cost uh, from producing that pizza. So that's an additional cost that uh, comes uh, if the firm is producing hundred, uh, the cost is five. But if they are producing 200, so uh, the cost is increased from five to 10. So the, this is the way that we can see. And when we combine these two uh, curves and we see that 
uh, if the market is determining the quantity and the price. So by this way, the benefit uh, goes to the society or the whole economy, the producer and the consumer is uh, one plus two plus three. And that's uh, if we apply the math mathematics and we can calculate the, uh, these two uh, triangles, right angle triangles, if, if we take the middle line 12.5 as a middle line, uh, so the line above and below. So we, we see here that 250 quantity is the quantity at which, uh, and the price of 12.5 is the uh, price at which uh, the society is getting the maximum benefit. Any other price other than this price gonna create a, a distortion in the market. Like for example, if they set the price uh, P1, which is above the equilibrium price. And by this way, uh, this is a price floor above the uh, price uh, equilibrium price. Uh, which is binding and by this way reduction in economic surplus caused by the price flow. So the economic benefit or the, uh, uh, the benefit to the consumer as well as to the producers is reduced by this uh, purple uh, color, two triangles, two right angle triangles of a purple color. So, and we also call them as a dead weight loss. Uh, this is the, uh, the purple area shows a dead weight loss, which is the overall loss of the economic surplus to the society of the binding price flow. So uh, the price restrictions uh, is not beneficial uh, for any society. Uh, inefficiency, if we impose the quantity restriction, not the price restriction, but the quantity, the impact is the same. The impact is the same that the economy and uh, that the society uh, gonna be uh, lose the benefit or uh, the surplus uh, is re reduced for both the producers and the society. However, uh, then, then the point comes to our mind that why does the government intervene in otherwise free markets would when the outcome is inefficient. So why the government uh, impose these restrictions? So the answer is uh, in many situations is that the government policy is motivated by the desire to help a specific group of people. The over co overall costs are deemed to be worthwhile price to pay to achieve the desired effect. So policymakers are making normative judgments and it is the job of the economists to undertake positive analysis emphasizing the actual effect of the policy rather than and what might be desirable. So we have to analyze that. The concept of economic surplus is not the only factor that policymaker needs to consider. They are considering all other factors as well. Uh, social responsibility is deemed to be more important and to the conduct of society in, in markets prohibited by law. So these are the reasons. However, there is always a debate. Uh, and when we talk about uh, price gogging, uh, like uh, in in extreme weather events, like a flooding or uh, heavy snow uh, or, uh, or or a pandemic, uh, like uh, I gave you an, an example uh, in our last uh, video, uh, create a scarcity of certain products. And we observed that uh, during the last uh, three years of the pandemic. So many economists argue that price, uh, we see that profiters used to uh, charge a very high price for toilet papers and these uh, face masks and sanitizers. So uh, many economists argue that profit prices uh, of these products will force all consumers to economize on their use. And we observe that and will bring forth the increased supply. So efficiency and welfare are expected to improve with this price work. Other argues that uh, on the other hand, the people argue that pursuit of profit is not acceptable at these times call for the public venture. So that's the way that uh, those times where the uh, public is in trouble, it's not a time to make profit. So there is no right answer to this debate without involving a normative judgment. So some are favoring that, okay, profiting and force the uh, econom economization in use and as well as the production supply will increase because the price uh, increase. So this is the way that we can uh, discuss with this uh, price control and market efficiency. Uh, again, uh, these all methods are, uh, we discuss price ceiling and price flow, uh, but we can come, come to the conclusion that uh, free market allocations are the best allocation. Uh, by this way, we are not distortioning the market. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, this whole topic of price control and uh, market efficiency. Uh, if you have any comment or a suggestion, please do write below. Thank you.